And uh, with Chicago Bulls, you won two championships, as I, as I mentioned. Um, let's call it the first dance, right? The first three. Uh, the original dance. <laughs> the original dance is even better. Which yeah. is better for you, against Lakers or against Trey Blazers? And I think they both hold a serious place for you because they're all different. And no two are the same. I think the second one, being at home, it was more memorable from a standpoint. What's up, Kitty Cat? Um, <laughs> uh, you know, that, that one was more memorable because our families and friends were here to share with us as, a, as opposed to us having to take 24 hours and all the anticipation and energy after the win. So we were able to celebrate in the city, which is great, man. And I was able to go to a midnight basketball league right after the game and take T-shirts and hats and to see the faces on the young brothers and sisters when you walk in the gym and they loving that we didn't just won, but they're never expecting to see one of the bulls walk into the gym and give out t-shirts and hats and shoot some jumpers with them. So it was, it was a great time, man. And, and it's something that I'll never forget. And I just thank the city of Chicago for not only affording us the opportunity, but supporting us throughout. Mm -hmm. And uh, how looks uh, cooperation with Michael Jordan? Because, uh, in the documentary, The Last Dance, we uh, focus mostly on the, the, the second trip team. And right, right. how looks cooperation with Michael in the, in, in the early 90s? Because we know him that he was tough, he got the aim, and he expected uh, tremendous effort from the other teammates. How do you remember, and, uh, you remember him as a teammate? Oh, man. It, and once again, you know, all of this documentary stuff is in retrospect. You know, it's not a, it's the reality, I tell people, you have the reality, and then you and I are in the reality of what we're doing right now. When we hang up from this call, you're going to leave with your truth, I'm going to leave with my truth, and we're going to tell, I'm going to be like, man, I just had this cool podcast with this brother, and you're going to tell your family, or you're going to go feed your cat, or whatever, <laughs> or whatever, <laughs> you know, but we're going to come away with truth. So I tell people, you know, all of us who were teammates with Michael, all of us who won a championship, on I was part of the first two, and those who went on to win the next one, we all understood not just the, the public demeanor of Michael, but we also understood within the private confines of our practices and everything else, we understood that the head man was Phil Jackson. It was never a thing where, you know, Michael would maybe go hard on people, but if he got too hard, Phil would pull his string and tell, yo, Michael, back up off of that. You know what I'm saying? Michael, mm -hmm. add more to the group. Be a bigger group leader. You know, he would throw darts at him to let him know that, you know, this is not about any personalities. It's not about, it's about us winning the championship. So a lot of what I've seen in the documentary is great entertainment, man. And it has great entertainment value. It gives some behind the scenes, but it misses on the personal part of a team that unifies it the personal parts of the team that, you know, for instance, the fact that the year that you were out and gone and you showed Scotty with his not standing up to shoot and that you wasn't even on that team. So why was it in the documentary other than mm -hmm. to tear Scotty down? You know what I'm saying? So it's certain things that you have to do with your position. I feel that much to whom much is given, much is required. And as people follow your lead and they look at how you lead, are you leading in a manner that's going to unify people or is it about dollars? And if it's about dollars, it's not going to be unified. Mm -hmm. and, um, have you seen The Last Dance as a documentary series? Every, every single episode. Uh -huh. man, I and, I, and the crazy part about it is I didn't even know it was coming out, man. And when it, came, <laughs> when it got ready to come out, I'm like, my son tells me, yeah, MJ's documentary is coming out. I'm like, what documentary? The Last Dance. And I'm like, why is it called The Last Dance? I'm just tripping, me being into words and searching for, you know, hidden meanings or whatever. And I was like, oh, that's cool. So I watched it. And then when I saw how meticulous they were to make sure leave as little of Hodge in there as possible, but you can't miss me in the scenery of it all. But all of a lot of my teammates he interviewed and then i was interviewed and someone told me that he interviewed 106 people 
for this. And I'm like, cool. I'm glad I didn't get interviewed, man. I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. good. Because I have heard that you, you, um, you've you got uh, complain a little about the 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 way how the, the teammates were, Michael Jordan teammates were presented. I uh, also read um, um, Horace Grant's statement and also that Scotty Pippen uh, wasn't happy about how he was presented. So uh, for me, you know, I, I'm a fan and I remember, uh, remember those moments because uh, the middle of 90s was the time when I start interesting in basketball. So for me, it was some kind of sentimental trip. And also, you, you know, it was time when I was in the secondary school and I would say that I was stubborn, contrary led. So uh, every time Chicago Bulls were in the finals, I was uh, against them. So I uh, watched Seattle Supersonics to win the first championship then twice Utah Jazz and now for me after a couple of years when I uh, saw the Michael Jordan as a re really great player uh, I think it from the fan perspective but still it's it's really good to know what was inside so exactly man and that's the part that's the part that I, I would tell people that when you watch an NBA game you're looking at the final product you're not looking at the, the fundamental foundational pieces that are put together so that you can see this final product called sports entertainment. So from that standpoint, the pristine part of the game, the, the training part of it, the film sessions, the bus rides, the planes and all of that is the inner workings of the game. And I feel like that's the engine, you know, and everybody sees the beautiful outside of the Lamborghini, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're not seeing what really you know, what's the fuel that's put in it? What's the fuel that drives it? What's the, what's the whole purpose behind it? And, you know, when we, you know, when we crystallize that focus into one word, and that word was ring, we start to get rings. And I think that, that's, a, that's a testimony to Phil Jackson and Tex Winter, Johnny Bott, Jim Clemens, Frank Hamblin, you know, all of the great coaching staffs that he's assembled where players had no choice but to respect it. When you're talking about the coaching staff in Chicago that we had when we won our first championship, besides Phil Jackson, the coaching staff had more than 100 years of NBA <laughs> service. 100 years of NBA service. You think about that. You got four guys on the staff that's got 25 years plus on the coaching in the NBA. Coach Who experience. the hell is who the hell am I or Scotty Pippen or MJ or anybody else going to question whatever game plan they put in front of us? And then based on that game plan, what type of training we're going to have day to day? Nobody's going to question that. So when I look at the way MJ has been portrayed as a hard driving force, no, nah, man, we had that before MJ even came on the court. When we was out there working on, on whoever was out there pre-practice working, we was already under the whip. We didn't eat you. <laughs> <laughs> to do that, you know? and that's one of the things too that I think is somewhat minimized in him being this forceful. I got to get you going. Is you take taking away from athletes who are driven athletes already, who are self-driven, wouldn't have gotten, wouldn't have been on the court with you if there, it wasn't some type of. Shit. Michael Jordan wasn't waking me up at five in the morning to run my five miles. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's the part. Excuse me. <clears throat> that's the part where. You know, everybody is looking at he him being the most motive, the most driven athlete ever. They have been, but don't minimize what other professionals have done on the same manner without the athleticism, without the athletic gift that Michael has been given. And did you did you have some private competition with Michael Jordan, for, for example, ping pong, uh, playing cards, or everything? Because he was a great competitor. Oh yeah, and, and see, like for me, I never and and I'm a golfer, and I've never. Michael invited me to play golf one time, and I had some stuff to do with my children, so I didn't get a chance to go, and I've never golfed with him. But mm -hmm. you know, as far as the only competitions we would have would be in practice, shooting games and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And really, what I should lose is shooting game. So you know, I look at when he entered the three point contest to try to win it. That was my first my first time winning it. And I think the motivation of him actually getting into the competition actually made me focus that much more because it took my mind off of beating Larry Bird. It took it put me in a place where I can't let this brother beat me. You know what I'm saying? He's my uh -huh. teammate, 
and I know how much hell I'm going to catch the rest of the time I'm his teammate. Man, I, I kicked your ass in a three-point contest. No, I can't let that happen. So when we was in the competition with me, he and I shot against each other that very first round. So in the midst of it, you know, you hear stuff. And most of the time when I'm shooting in a competition, I don't hear anything. I hear the ball going through the net. But knowing that MJ was down on the other end, I was gauging how we were going at it by the crowd. So in the midst of it, I'm, I, know I'm, I know I'm shooting the ball decent, okay? But mm -hmm. I'm hearing the crowd go crazy. And I'm like, oh, shit. MJ is shooting me out down there, right? <laughs> so I shoot my last ball. I shoot my last ball, and the buzzer rings, and I look up, and I'm like, 24 to 9. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I shot his ass out, <laughs> you know? So it was, it was funny, but it was just another – I tell young people about confidence and that through challenges, supreme confidence is gained. And whatever it is you may be doing, you know, it may be a spelling test of words you may have never been able to, to get right. But this day you got it right and it proved to you that you're capable of doing it. And that day proved to me that I was capable of being the best shooter on the planet Earth. Why not?